thank you for joining me. I'm giving a little presentation here about uh, geoengineering and more specifically about the spiritual side of geoengineering. Um, geoengineering is the science of altering the Earth's, altering the Earth's climate. And to many people this is rather baffling. Why are people doing it and what is the end game? And there are of course on a, on a material level many players, various governments, uh, big companies, mainly in the food industry or in the health industry, who stand to benefit from certain developments. Um, but it's a rather difficult mosaic and in a way uh, to add to it or to give another side to it I would like to talk about the spiritual or energetic side of the geoengineering. Uh, to understand its relevance it is we first need to understand our own solar system and its purpose. Um, and to do that we I'm kind of going back to the Maya predictions about 2012. Um, our solar system is basically a classroom and our bodies are like seats in the classroom for our spirits. So we, our spirits go to a class which is our solar system When there's a body available they can sit in the classroom, receive some lessons, do some work and develop themselves. So this is rather the intention. If you look at the 2012 event of the, of the Mayas, it's basically um, a graduation project. So those who are ready to move on to the next class, they can move on and new students can move in and a new curriculum starts. Maybe new things will be taught in the solar system, the next phase of the evolution, not necessarily with the spirits which are currently in the classroom, but there's an opportunity to, for new students to go in and old students to graduate and to move on. Um, this is rather the intention. Uh, you may also ask how did I get this information. Um, I like to go as close to the source as possible. So um, as a channel I basically went looking for the deceased creators of the Mayan calendar and asked them about the significance. And this is what they revealed to me. Um, I know that this is rather different from the uh, popular stories which have been circulating about angels or aliens coming down to save the world and everything being changed and everybody getting new awareness after the shift. Um, these are basically uh, uh, Protestant uh, legends which have been uh, yeah, given a little Maya paint. Um, these stories all originated in the uh, I believe the 18th century in Protestant US um, where a lady had her own ideas about how the uh, Day of Judgment would happen that God would yeah, remove the pure and, and damn the impure and um, this uh, well idea I hope is incorrect <laughs> uh, although quite appealing to many I understand it is always nice to have a, a an almighty and perfect overlord taking care of you or rescuing you. But this is not the game which is currently being played on the earth. We have to take a lot more responsibility for ourselves and for our own development. But anyway, um, lots of people are now realizing that indeed that these claims which originated from Protestant American flows are, have been proven incorrect. So perhaps now they will be more open to actually find out what was supposed to happen and what is still supposed to happen. Um, when I talked last years to these um, uh, Maya creators of the calendar, I was rather uh, disappointed to hear I was only the fifth person to consult them directly about yeah, this whole shift. Um, so I hope that from all the millions of people who are into this whole shift thing and movement thing, a few more of them will take the effort to go to the source and find out from the creators um, what exactly it is about. And they can explain it in much more detail than I can, but feel free to ask questions, of course. Um, so for this shift to happen, um, uh, there are uh, several new spirits who want to incarnate on the earth or to inspire people on the earth. 
um, and other spirits which whose place or whose role has been served out, they need to move on. Uh, they're not allowed to lag or to, to stay behind. And for this to happen in a smooth way, uh, there are actually two factors which are important. One of them is the energetic circulation, so that indeed spirits can leave this plane and can enter into this plane. Uh, the others are of course the graduation projects. So the energy available to the people who are here in their transformation uh, process. And there's a problem with both of these yeah, uh, rather important factors and all the other factors of course the awareness and determination of the spirits currently incarnated on this planet. So I will go into the first problem. Um, so spirits tend to move in groups. Um, also called choirs or egregores, and they follow a certain path of development. And these groups come and go and they bring new impulses to our planet, new ways of working or of developing. And what we've had in the yeah, era which is now ending is that there have been a lot of groups which worked very in a top-down manner. So there were priests and priestesses or kings or queens or anyway some type of government and uh, this government received the impulses from yeah, higher beings, higher worlds and they, their job was to use these impulses to yeah, educate their people, to bring their people to a higher spiritual level. Um, now the game is kind of changing um, because after this period that we should have been fed and nurtured and educated by our uh, yeah, by our betters, um, we now have to take more responsibility. It's in the next era we will uh, learn, well, era is rather long, so it's about yeah, 6,000 years, uh, we should learn how to um, take our own responsibility, how to integrate all these different uh, societal roles in ourselves, so how to become our own worker, our own merchant, our own king, but also our own priest or priestess. And this is not an easy process, hence also the long period of time which we've been granted to do this. But it's important that we shift to the new paradigm and this new way of learning or seeing things, this new way of relating to the world around us. <coughs> um, unfortunately this movement of groups uh, needs an energetically clear atmosphere and also for the influence of a group to um, inspire people we need a relatively unpolluted sky. So um, there are uh, spirits, spirit, they're called yeah, uh, spirits of the upper skies or muses who bring inspiration, ideas and dreams to people. And uh, um, these spirits they go from sources where this knowledge is present, which can be holy people, holy sites, um, or other yeah, energetic antennae which yeah, receive these impulses and they move this yeah, inspiration to other people who are on the same path but in different locations who are receptive to them. And unfortunately this spirit population is not doing very well because of the yeah, junk in the sky and by that I don't mean just indeed the, the, the aluminium particles but also the radiation. Uh, because uh, spirits, they may be, they also still have vulnerabilities, they can still be destroyed or disrupted. Um, they can be misled, they can be misguided, so you can look at them just like animals who because of the polluted seas they, yeah, beach, beached whales. Um, and Similar things as are happening to the seas with the fish are happening to our spirit populations here on Earth. Um, so a lot of the new impulses which yeah are are trying to yeah seed the Earth are not being very successful because of this. Another reason is of course that not news yeah there aren't enough antennae or sanctuaries being built for these powers to really anchor themselves to the Earth. So uh, we're looking at a relatively uh, yeah, unsuccessful changeover where very little will change if we continue 
as it is. So it is important not just for us to stop yeah, polluting the skies with radiation and uh, particularly aluminium, but also to start to create uh, sanctuaries to support the people who are receiving these impulses, who are giving us this new inspiration, who are in a way the carriers of the seeds of the new time. Um, so I hope more of that will, uh, will start to happen, maybe as a result of this little video. Um, but this is also the uh, purpose. So most of the spirits who are living here, they came here in a previous colonization wave about 20,000 years ago. And uh, many of the colonists have come to identify with this place, see this as home, see the planet as theirs. And they feel um, ill-inclined to give up what they've achieved, what they've created. They've gone attached to this world and they don't want new people moving in or forcing them out. So they're kind of like afraid of the, of the immigrants and they're trying to keep them out. So it's very much mirrored in our uh, immigration laws where we try to keep foreigners out, keep them from taking our jobs, taking our places, uh, bringing new impulses to our society. But the same thing is happening on a spiritual level. So it's very, you can just look at the physical world and you can see what is happening on the energetic world as well. And of course these impulses to yeah, slow down the, um, um, the spiritual e evolution, um, they're also fueled on a material level by indeed this fear of foreigners, um, but also by uh, removing nourishment from our, of, of our spirits, so they become less receptive to these impulses and we become less likely to do what we need to do to be able to move on to the next phase. And uh, spiritual nourishment comes actually from uh, various sources, but also very important is the balance in our consciousness. So we have our ego, which is designed to help us to manifest on our, in, in the current material world, uh, to survive here and to be able to carry out our work in the material world. But um, the ego should just be a vessel and the guiding force or the inspiration should come from our spirit and our spirit is in turn again inspired by higher forces. Um, but the power balance between the ego and the spirit has shifted in favor of the ego. So we've become very good at being in the material world. We've become very adept at um, yeah, trying to survive here. But we've kind of lost our purpose, lost our goal, because we are losing our contact with our spirit. Um, there are several things to blame for that. One of them is the um, demands or the complexity of modern society, I mean mainly Western civilization, where survival has become very tricky, very intricate, requiring a lot of attention, requiring a lot of thought. Um, and uh, because of the feeding of fear, of insecurity, and um, also the projection of images uh, to which we should aspire, but which are unnatural to us, which require a lot of adaption. So everybody should be thin and beautiful and blonde and have big breasts or be a sports athletic star or whatever. Uh, while it is not within our nature, that's a big struggle of our egos to try to conquer a place or find a place in society to find our niche but since these niches do not correspond with the niche which our spirit desires there's often a lot of mental illness a lot of tension a lot of stress um, and uh, a lot of unhappiness so our society has kind of become inverted so it is uh, the physical world which in a way imposes what our spirit should do and how our spirit can manage or survive rather than our spirit being in the director's chair and organizing our lives. Um, and we see this manifested also in, of course, the, uh, yeah, the current economical crisis, in the political crises in the Middle East, um, because when people are fighting for food, fighting for their lives, fighting for other things, they have very little time to be receptive to higher impulses. Uh, so the pollution is not just on a physical level, but it is also very much on an energetical level. 
and what is very important is to feed our spirits and our spirits are naturally fed by being in places or around people who in a way radiate this impulse so if you can find uh, a spiritual master or mistress or a holy site it is good to spend some time around them uh, it's also good to spend time with people who have a similar spiritual impulse as yours so they receive a bit of energy you receive a bit of energy and by sharing this energy you in a way create a more rich atmosphere for you you create a little energetic ecology around you which will yeah nourish you but also the spirits which are natural uh, yeah, guides to you and by having yeah these spiritual get-togethers and gatherings of like-minded people um, yeah it's very beneficial to spiritual development the other major thing which is unfortunately also decreasing is uh, spiritual art um, our spirits are attuned to certain vibrations and every spirit has its own vibrational level from which which is most natural to it and from which it draws nourishment so for some people they're very yeah attuned to colors and they love paintings other people are attuned to sound they love concerts uh, other people are attuned to shapes and movement and they love dance other people are on a more intellectual level and they like books and poetries and stories and legends and um, any art form is fine uh, but the essence of a good art or a good artist is that it indeed feeds the spirit so it brings the consciousness to ask questions to see things in a different perspective to realize um, yeah their nature to see beyond the illusion and a good art does this so for, i'm very happy that also in the more mainstream movies like movies by Christopher Nolan who really explores or helps people to explore the psychological nature of themselves through the heroes depicted on the screen or movies like by the Wachowski brothers um, or brother and sister I should say um, who really uh, make people aware of the, the, the journey of the spirit and um, yeah, how it is struggling in its heroic attempt to uh, yeah, not to flounder in the in the yeah, strong material flows of this world in the rocky oceans, um, and to have a good balance between the necessity to adapt to our current society, but also the necessity to change our current society, and to make it more attuned to our being. And this brings me to another important reason for the change, um, because energetically we are being terraformed. We have energetic bodies which um, have been attuned to like what was the energetic uh, yeah, nature of our planet during the yeah, last couple of thousands of years. And um, this was a time where yeah, in a way power was very centralized. And uh, there were a few people who could actually share and communicate with other things, the, the high priest and priestesses they at you know, telepathic communication, astral journeys. Uh, now we're getting more and more media and internet so that everybody can do this. Um, but yeah, it's also important that these things, that the change really happens and that the power really lands with the people, with the individual who is trying to develop. And that we also take this attitude towards each other that we see we're all individuals on our own journeys and that there are people who have a similar journey to us so we should travel with them and work with them and there are people who, go, who are going their own way and that's fine too just go your own way but we need something to um, restrain or remove the old order um, or at least to replace it with a more liberal form of order a more liberal system of policing than there has been up to now um, but uh, as I said, we're being terraformed. So our energy bodies need to adapt, need to attune to a new future, to a new energy. And uh, currently these, yeah, uh, these things which are being put in our food, are being put in the atmosphere, they also have an energetic effect, especially aluminium. Aluminium is uh, yeah, kind of like lead against radiation, but aluminium 
the aluminium is kind of lead, a, a strong blocker of more high yeah, spiritual energies. Uh, fortunately there are also metals which are conducive to uh, spiritual energies like uh, copper, silver and gold. So these are kind of a natural compensation towards, uh, the, uh, against the effect of aluminium on our systems. Um, the, um, the terraforming is what you could say a bid. Um, so depending on the energetic conditions of this world certain spirits will feel more attuned to this planet. So if we turn this planet into a toxic hellhole there will still be life and there will still be spirits who come here and who regard it as natural and who will come to live here. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it just means that, okay, well that's the way this planet is going to be or that's the purpose it's going to serve for the next 6,000 years. Um, there are other beings who think, well, it should not turn into a toxic hellhole, it should be a rather nice place, a rather yeah, improved and better version of the natural world which we have enjoyed for the past 6,000 of years. And they are kind of on the other side of the tug of war. Um, so I would say decide for yourself what type of energetic yeah, interaction would you like to have with the world. Because the internet, energetic interaction we've been having has been one of very much joining with it, uh, of being one with it. We were part of nature once, we were yeah, just part of the earth. And at this present time we still are. And of course um, if nature becomes hostile, if we need to yeah, protect ourselves from our environment, this gives us a lot more freedom. Uh, we become totally isolated from others, from other influences. Um, and, but this freedom comes also with a lack of inspiration, a lack of nourishment, a lack of food. So although we are free in our development, the development will be extremely, extremely slow. It will be a snail's pace of spiritual growth, rather than the rather rapid pace we've experienced over the past 6,000 years. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of um, powers who are really uh, have become really attached to this world, to this planet, to their physical bodies. Um, they would like the spiritual development to slow down, uh, so that the more sluggish kind, the more slow students can, in a way, take over the class, rather than the more advanced students, yeah, uh, taking over. So this is kind of the tug of war between the ones who think or are more conservative in nature, who say like, okay, we don't want to move on, we want actually to go back to a more primitive, a more slow type of spiritual development, which is more centered on the ego, centered on the self, centered on the individual, so, and uh, a more rapid type of evolution, which is also focusing on the individual, but rather on the individual as part of a larger system. Uh, what are my duties? What are my um, what is my purpose to other beings? How can I serve them? How do they need to serve me? And discovering your own nature and the nature of others, and seeing actually the divine plan already inherent in our natures, and trying to carry that out as we learn. Um, so this tells a little bit of the um, of what is going on on the planet, and if you look at it from a spiritual perspective. There's actually dozens of uh, spiritual groups all yeah, trying to find a foothold or make a bridgehead on this world so that they can help guide us for the next 6,000 years. Um, and of course I have my own preferences. I find some of them more desirable than others. There's also old, yeah, old structures and I think some of them should go, some of them should stay, others should just integrate into the new system. There's actually a lot of work which needs to be done to uh, prepare our world for the next 6,000 years. And in about another 12 years, um, the valve is going to be shut off. We won't be receiving new applicants anymore. No new spirits will come to our planet anymore, uh, only by high exception. So then we'll be kind of stuck with what we've built up over the 26 year period that the gates have been open. So we're already past the halfway point, but if I look at the work which needs to be done and what has been done, we're yeah really, really a lot behind schedule. Um, so I hope that more people will yeah, stop being yeah, uh, trapped 
in wrong illusions or delusions about what is going on, what's important, and uh, try to make contact with these new groups and see if they want to work with them, want to cooperate with them, and see if we can lay the seeds for this new time and help these seeds to grow. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope this has been of some help. God bless.